Red flags for the European banking system? Let's find out. Jerome Vandenbroek is head of investment grade credit strategy at ING Financial. He is live with us this morning from Amsterdam. Jerome, that, all of that comes on the heels of these forced mergers, uh, takeover by the state of a Spanish savings bank. Just how bad is the situation right now in the Spanish banking system? Uh, the Spanish banking system is um, confronted with a, uh, a rather uh, difficult um, a set of circumstances in terms of funding, as you've highlighted, but also because of its dependency on the, on the real estate market. And that's exactly why, for example, today the Bank of uh, Spain indicated that uh, the Cajas, the uh, smaller savings banks in Spain, would need to hold extra reserves to make sure that their exposure to this particular real estate market would be uh, better buffeted. Jerome, you've uh, addressed the issue of the Cajas, There's, those are the small regional savings banks. What about the biggies like BBVA and Santander? Uh, to what degree is this little crisis, maybe it's not so little, in the Caja system spreading to the bigger banks? Um, we feel it's, it's definitely less of a problem for the bigger banks. Um, I think it's part of the nervousness of the market that the story yesterday um, about BBVA and its uh, potential uh, funding problems in the USCP market uh, became such a, a highlight for the markets in the, in the afternoon. It highlighted the nervousness of the market. Uh, we actually feel that the, um, the cleansing, let's say, of the Spanish Caja banking system will lead to uh, perhaps tactical or structural opportunities for BBVA and Santander long term. Of course, now they are, uh, they are confronted with a situation that the whole of the Spanish banking system in the eyes of investors looks rather weak. Uh, we feel that um, there, is, uh, there are um, opportunities out there for BBVA and Santander. They've done a lot of their funding already uh, so far this year. Um, they have got capabilities in the US CP markets, but also outside the US CP markets. Sure, their levels have risen, but we're not too worried about BBVA and Santander specifically. Jerome, I've got about 30 seconds left with you. Is it not possible that we're seeing the beginnings of what you say is the greatest risk in the sovereign debt crisis, that it will be a spillover into the banking system? After all, if we rewind to 2007 and 2008, wasn't it BNP Paribas' inability to roll over short-term debt that proved the canary in the coal mine? No. Um, I, must, uh, I must agree with that, uh, that that is the downside risk, that we are confronted with a situation that's very similar to 2007. It does have uh, characteristics of that, um, and it is the funding issue for uh, longer term, as long as this sovereign risk story lasts. It will be the long-term funding issue for banks. Their business model is challenged because their funding levels are too high. Deutsche Bank issued or tapped a bond today uh, almost at twice the spread it did an issue in March. Um, so the funding levels are significantly under pressure um, and it could be the, that particular spillover that I was talking about. Jerome, yes. thanks so very much. Jerome Vandenbroek of Investment Grade Credit Strategy at ING in Amsterdam.